Genesis chapter 22. Lord, I ask you to take control. Help me as I preach. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Genesis chapter 22 begins with, And it came to pass after these things. And I'm pretty sure that none of you read Genesis 1 through 22 this morning. So, after these things, after what things? I'm not going to start in Genesis chapter 1 because you know all of those stories. But I want to start in Genesis chapter 12 and verse number 1. So flip back. Keep a place there in 22 because we're coming back. But it starts out with God's dealing with Abram. As we talked about this morning, how much does you want from God? And how much does God want from you? When God began to deal with Abram, Abram was just an ordinary common man, just like you and me. In our lost condition, a sinner, he lived in the land of idol worship. He was a participant in idol worship. He knew basically the only thing he knew about God was what he had been told by someone else. Um, had no real dealings into with God. But God in, in chapter 12 and verse number 1, it says, Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. What does God want from me? God wants obedience from me. Abraham didn't, Abram at this point, didn't know very much about God at all. Abram was the product of his upbringing, just like many of us. The Bible says over in the New Testament, it says, called out of darkness into his marvelous light. <clears throat> and that's basically what God did for Abram. He said, and the Lord said unto Abram, come out of where you're at and go into a place that I'll show you. He had no idea. Clara gets all bent out of shape about not having things written down and not having all the schedules and the points and all of this kind of stuff done. and <clears throat> God said, Abraham, I want you to go to a land and I'm going to show you. You ain't got a clue what you're going to be doing there. You don't know how you're going to make it there. You don't know anything about the land that you're going to, but you go over there into the land. Sometimes God just wants our blind obedience. God wants us to, to believe him. God wants us to trust him. You don't have to understand all there is to know about God. I was talking to some folks this past week about trusting God. And they said, well, I don't understand. I said, I've been at it for 40 years and I don't understand it all. There's people that lived for hundreds of years in the Old Testament and they didn't understand it all. Abram was 75 years old when God talked to him. And he said, get up and get out into a land and I'll show you. And what will happen? He said, Verse number two, and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and I will make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Verse three, and I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse four, so Abram departed. He did what God asked him to do. God is an I will and you will God. Yeah. God says, if you get up and get out of your land and get out of your comfort zone and get out of the place where you've been always in your life, get out of where you're comfortable and get out of what you want to do, then I will bless you. I will take care of you. I will cause your name to be great. I will build of you a great nation. And God, Abram was just an ordinary person, just like you and I. I look back at my life and where I came from, from a half-breed sharecropper family to a child of the king. There is no reason why I should be where I am today outside of the Lord God Almighty. And in chapter 12, verse number 7, it says, I'll give you this land. Verse number 13, Abram begins to backslide a little bit because that's the way he was. That's the, that was the life he had led. He said, now, honey, when, when, when we go into this strange land where these weird people are, he said, you tell them you're my sister. He said, because you're a really knockout, drop-dead, gorgeous woman, and I don't want nobody killing me to get you. And y'all y'all read it sometimes. It's pretty cool stories. But but Abram, 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 Abram told a half-truth. Uh, you'll find out in, in chapter, I don't know, it's somewhere over there about 
13, 14, somewhere along over in there, I don't remember, that Abram explains that she really was his half-sister. She was the same daddy but different mom. But still, it wasn't the truth. And, and so they, they get over there, and the next, the next chapter, verse number 13 in chapter 12, it says, uh, And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of the, the Sarah. That's verse 17. But look at verse thir or chapter 13, verse number 4, And unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first, and there Abram called upon the name of repented. God's Holy Spirit at that time was the voice of God. God had shown Abram some kind of way that you really ought not to be doing that. And so Abram went back to where it all started, built him an altar, and repented to God. Chapter 13, God began blessing him again. It says that he was very rich with cattle, silver, and gold. <laughs> Remember, 22, it says, after these things. After what things? God called Abraham out of the land of sin, out of the life of sin, out of being his own man, into following God. Not understanding all about God, but following God. Not knowing all about who God was, but following God. And the key to what does God want from me, God wants obedience from me. God wants me to do what he asked me to do. Yeah. I don't have to understand it. I don't have to explain it. I don't have to explain it to you. I don't have to explain it to myself. I have to do what God has asked me to do. Yeah. That's what God wants from us. He wants obedience. He says it. Obedience is better than sacrifice. <laughs> and so in chapter 13, he returned back to the very first place he started. And that's the key to our lives. Whenever we screw up and you're going to screw up, I know things and I fix things, but I'm still going to screw up. You know things, and you're going to fix things, but you're still going to screw up. And the key is to tell God, I screwed up again, and I need to make it right with you. Yeah. And so chapter 14, Lot got captured by one of the enemies. Abram saw and talked to God about it. They went down. They got Lot and all the possessions back. Remember, after these things, God is step by step teaching Abram to trust him. God is step by step meticulously and methodically going through life with Abram, teaching him that you may not understand me, but you can trust me. You may not understand all of my ways, but you can trust me. You may not understand why I do what I do, but you can trust me. And chapter 15, he says that he believed God, verse number six. He said he believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. The same way it is with you and me. If we believe God, if we trust God, the old song says trust and obey. And, and we... We go through life after these things. After what things? After the things that God has shown you and taught you. We had a praise a little while ago. God has answered so many prayers this week. And in every one of our lives, God has shown himself mighty in our lives. God has shown himself available in our lives. God has shown himself to be real in our lives. After these things, I can look back at my life and I say, this is where God brought me from. Mm -hmm. Not my money, not my brains, not my talent, not my abilities, not my disabilities, but my God has brought me to where I am today. And God will continue to take me as long as I keep believing him. It will be counted to me for my righteousness. Mm -hmm. Verse number 18 of chapter 15, the promise reinstated. God reminded Abram of what he had promised him three chapters earlier. God reminds us. We have, we have a constant reminder right here of God's promises to us. All we have to do is flip open the book anywhere and we can find a promise from God to us. I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Knock and it shall be opened. Promise after promise after promise. If you call upon the name of the Lord, he will hear you and answer you and show you great and mighty things. All of these asking you shall receive. All of these promises that God, and so God is reminding, because Abram didn't have the written word that we have. Abram couldn't turn to Genesis 22 and see after these things. Abram couldn't turn to Romans 3.23 and, and John 3.16. Abram had to go by the word of the Lord, and God cared enough about this sinner who was living in a land of darkness and called him out of darkness into his marvelous life, and God cared enough about him to come to him personally and talk to him just the same way he does you and me in the power of the Holy Spirit. God comes to us in the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and speak to us. And guys, it's when we start to screw up, God said, you really ought not to be doing that. Yeah. And we have the choice to listen to him or not. Yeah. Just the same way Abram did. God had the Abram had the choice. Abram, God told Abram, get up out of your country and go into a land. Abram said, no, I'm comfortable where I'm at. And a lot of us respond that way when yeah. God tells us to do uh -huh. something. 
No, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable right here, God. Mm -hmm. Moses did. Need you to go down and talk to Pharaoh. I can't talk. I, 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 my tongue won't work right. He said, well, I'll get Abraham. I'll get Aaron to talk for you then. Joshua. Yeah, yeah. He got the right Aaron, that's for sure. <laughs> He'll talk. He'll that's for sure. He was telling me. Aaron, Aaron was talking to me last night and he says, I got to talking to this guy and I stood there and talked to him for an hour. No surprise, but you know, <laughs> yeah. but, <laughs> but chapter 16, Ishmael was born. Sarah's answer to Abraham's promise. Yeah. Not God's direction. Yeah. We don't understand God's and his methods, so we're going to fix it. We're going to write our list, and we're going to write our outlines, and we're going to line up everything, and we're going to fix it our way. And God says, but that ain't the way I want it done. God says, God says, this is the way I want it done. This is how I want it done. Well, God, I don't really want to talk to that person. Well, that's the person I want you to talk to. But I'd rather talk to that person. Yes, so would God, but he loves this on over here too. Yeah. Chapter 17, he says, at 99 now, remember the time frame for this. God started talking to him when he was 75. And so for the last 99 minus 75, what was that like 14? Like 32. It ain't quite that much. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but God started, see, we get all bent out of shape if God doesn't talk to us every day or every week. This was Somebody do some subtraction. I don't. I know it ain't thirty-two. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. So twenty-four years, and God still hasn't even changed Abram's name yet. He had just been showing him stuff. He'd just been teaching him stuff. He'd just been guiding him along the journey. And every single step that God said, Abram, you take this step. Abram said, Okay. Why? Because after these things I've already seen, I got to believe what you're going to do now. And the same way with us, after these things, after where God has brought us from, after the challenges God has brought us through, after the prayers that God has answered for us, after the changes in our life, we can say this morning, after these things, God said, I want you to do something else. No problem, God. Got you covered. Chapter 18, we get the angelic visit. With the news of the child. Chapter 19, he saved Lot. For Abraham's sake, y'all remember Sodom and Gomorrah and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Chapter 20, there he went again telling him it was his sister. And Abimelech, was, the whole family was going to be cursed and God visited Abimelech. Abimelech said, wait a minute, it ain't my fault, dude. The dude lied to me. He said, he told me he was his sister. How was I supposed to know he was a liar? That shows you that Christians and people following God can still screw up. Yeah. But the key is getting it right. Yeah. Chapter 21, Isaac was born. And, and I, I'm covering, I got, I got lots more information, but y'all just going to have to go back and read Genesis for yourself. Because there's a lot of pretty cool stuff in the Bible if you just actually read it. Yeah. Chapter 22 is where we're at today. <clears throat> and it came to pass. After these things, after what things? After all those things we just talked about. Yeah. And a lot more, because I didn't cover them all. A lot of things in 25 years that God had been teaching Abram. <coughs> Finally, he changed his name. I skipped that part. He changed his name along about uh, chapter 17. He has changed his name from father to father of nations. Remember now, they didn't have no kids. How are you going to be the father of nations if you ain't got no kids? How is he going to bless your seed if you ain't got no seed? And so that's another step. Now, as long about 21, 20 long in there, Abraham, begins, Abraham at that point begins to question God. Well, you made me, made me all these promises, but I ain't got no kids, so I'll just circumcise everybody in my household and we'll make them my heirs. God said, no, that ain't my plan. I'm not going to do it your way, Abraham. I didn't do it Sarah's way and Hagar and Ishmael. I'm not going to do it your way and, and, and have all your servants be your kids. I'm not going to do it that way. Well, how in the sound belly heck are you going to do it, God? I'll tell you when it's time. And you see, we get all bent out of shape. 
with God because God doesn't fill us in. And God doesn't write it down. Yeah. Point one, point two, point three. We can all be out of shape because God don't show us the plan for tomorrow. God's got the plan. And just like that dude losing that box of whatever it was he lost a while ago, God don't lose his plans. He's had a plan from the beginning of time and he ain't missed a jot or a two. Amen. That God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, behold, here I am. Now, we don't, we, this, this tempt is not like what we think we're tempted. We think we're tempted like the box of donuts is sitting there on the table. <laughs> you know, and fat boy don't tempt with donuts, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's just, you know, it, it's, it's that temptation of that 14 point elk standing there just across the private property oh, fence yeah. line. Well, you're getting her off. <laughs> <laughs> See, some of us succumb to the temptation. And some of us just drive on by until nightfall. I mean, not. <laughs> but it, it's, 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 a, it's a test. Now, God wasn't testing Abraham because God didn't know what he was going to do. Because God already had the next few thousand years planned out. Yeah. Because out of thy seed, you know, out of the throne of David, the lion of the tribe of Judah, God already had to play. God already knew what Abraham was going to decide to do. And there's some that'll say, well, God planned out for Abraham to do this. Well, I, I don't know. I ain't going to get into that Calvinistic argument. Y'all fight over it for the rest of eternity if you want to, but I got better things to do with my time. All I know is that God did. Mm -hmm. And what God chooses to tell me, okay, and what he chooses not to tell me, that's okay too. Yeah. And so here, he said, take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, now, he didn't say into Mount Moriah. There's a possibility, and I ain't going to get into argument about that either, but it was on Mount Calvary in the land of Moriah. And a few thousand years later, there was another only son that went up the mount to be sacrificed. Anyway, we won't get into that either. Offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I'll tell you the other. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and played the wood for the burnt offering and he rose up and he went into the place of which God had told him. And then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. So three days, they're traveling. Don't know really what's going to happen when they get there. The only thing he knew is what does God want from me? Obedience. God said, you go up yonder to the mountain and sacrifice your kid. That's a hard deal. Because that was what the folks that he had left were famous for. And he said, I, I need, I need. God, I need some clarification here. I need to, I need to know how we're supposed to kid him. I need to know what we're supposed to. No, that's not what he did. He rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and left. And, 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 and because God wants our obedience, even though we don't always understand. God may want you to talk to somebody that you don't understand why you've got to talk to them. God may want you, matter of fact, I forgot to tell you, right, I need to check today. <coughs> to put it in the offering plate. I don't understand why God wanted me to put that in there. I put enough of them in there. <laughs> but God said, I need you to do this. Amen. And so I got to do it. Now, I don't know how he's going to fix that problem. Because if God gets paid, somebody else ain't. <laughs> yeah. And so, what you see, but I, I'd rather owe somebody else than owe God. So we're all right with that, okay? Um, but, he, but he says here, well, let's, let's just go on. Verse number five, and Abraham said unto the young men, abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad are going to go yonder and worship and come again unto you. Now, did I miss something or back a couple of verses? He said, I want you to sacrifice your son. God didn't tell Abraham to trust him because here's the answer. God just said, trust me. Amen. 
And so Abraham had enough faith and trust in God. He didn't know how God was going to fix it. Amen. But he just knew that God was going to fix it. Amen. And so he said, me and the young are going to go around and we're going to worship and me and the young are going to come back. Amen. And, 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 and so for three days, Isaac, and I don't believe, let's see, I, I forgot exactly how old this was. But anyway, Ishmael had already been born, and, and, and Ishmael was like 13 years old when, when Isaac was born. And so there was a time period. And so Abraham has at least 100. And I don't know many 100-year-old men that Colston couldn't whoop. <laughs> and Colston's only 10. I got a feeling that Isaac was a little older than that. So for three days, they're going along there. Isaac's carrying the wood for his own sacrifice. And he asked daddy, he said, daddy, he said, we got the wood, we got the fire, we got the knife. He said, but where's the sacrifice? This little inquisitive mind is kind of wondering, it, it, kind of like Colston, asking 9 million questions, 90 miles an hour. We, daddy, you got to explain this to me. And Abraham says, I can't explain it because I don't have the answers. And Isaac said, here, wait a minute, dude. Daddy's holding a knife, I'm holding the wood. Dad, daddy's leading and I'm carrying the wood and the fire. Something ain't making sense here. But Isaac was the willing servant going up the mount. That's a whole other series of sermons. I might catch on about tomorrow sometime. <laughs> and Isaac spake unto Abraham and said, My father, he said, Here am I. Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb. Now remember, God's been talking to Abraham, not Isaac. Yeah. Isaac's sitting here as a teenager or a young man going, who's this God you're talking about? Uh, you know, I, I deal in facts, Pops. I don't see no lamb. Up yonder on the mountain, there ain't no pastures. Ain't no lambs up there. I don't know who this God dude you've been talking about is. But we got something to work out. And Abraham said, don't worry, baby. Me and God got this. And don't you know there was a question in Abraham's mind, too, for three days? You know, if he'd have just told him down there at the bottom of the mountain, go in there and stab your kid. You know, sometimes it'd been a little easy. But he says, you got three days to think about this going up the mountain. God, I'll be kicked off the internet now. <laughs> but but for three days they're going up this mountain I don't know how much talking was going on other than this conversation and they came to the place which God had told him of and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood you know I, I just I, I have a hard time actually picturing this in my mind until I actually go to Calvary and I see Jesus laying down on the cross yeah. and letting them nail the nails yeah. through his hands and his feet. And I see Isaac letting Abraham bind him up yeah. and lay him on the altar. Because as much as I love my family, daddy ain't going to be tying me up and throwing me on the altar. Yeah. But Isaac was willing. And I'm sure somewhere along the journey, mm -hmm. Because after these things, Abraham had been telling Isaac all of the things that God has been doing and all about who this God is and what this God has been taking care of and, and all of the provision that God has been giving. And I'm sure Abraham added to this conversation, God will provide himself a lamb. And Isaac, I really don't know how he's going to do it. But you remember this, and you remember this, and you remember how God did this, and you remember how I told you that God gave us this, and you remember how I told you that God gave us a lot back, and you remember how I told you that God spared us from the family, and you remember. And so Isaac would say, okay, Daddy said he trusted him. So I'm going to trust him too. Was that old song, Faith of Our Fathers? Yeah. <clears throat> and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. 
And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and behold, a ram caught in the thicket by his horn. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, which God will provide. And as he said unto him in this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. What does God want from me? My obedience. What do I want from God? Every single thing he wants to give me. But it's going to cost me. It's going to cost me my obedience. Abraham was just like me and you. Just an ordinary common man. And God through the power of the Holy Spirit in this day and age calls unto us and says come unto me ask and shall be given all that, name call, all that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved for God so loved the world that he gave no preacher, no baptismal pool no pope, no beads, no joining the church membership, no cutting your hair right no dressing up come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest <clears throat> after these things it came to pass what things all the things that God has done for us all the times that God has come through all the times when God made a way when there wasn't a way all the times that God answered a prayer in the middle of the night that you thought nobody in the world heard but God did all the times when God reached down and sued your your aching soul. Mm -hmm. All the times when God comforted you when there was no comfort to be had. Mm -hmm. After these things. After these things when you called upon the name of the Lord and he saved your wretched soul mm -hmm. and changed your destiny from, heaven to, mm -hmm. from hell to heaven. After these things. We all have an after these things in our life. As we follow God. As we trust God. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have it all written down. You don't have to have it all lined out. I see some of these preachers, and God bless them if they can do it. You know, they got point one, two, three, and four, A, B, and C up under each point. Benediction goes here. Invitation goes here. Offering goes here. And that's great. I, if that's the way you have to do it, you go for it. But I have to go by God. Amen. And I have to go by God says, get into a land and I'll go with you and I'll show you. He said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless and I'm not going to leave you alone. You don't know how you're going to get there. You don't know what you're going to do when you get there, but I'll be there with you. Amen. And that's the way our life is. Yeah. God is going to because God cannot lie. Right. He's going to walk with us every step of the journey. All he wants from us is obedience. God says, when I ask you to do something, I want you to do it. Yeah. And if you do it, then I went, I went back just when I was reading through Genesis again this morning. And I just started marking through all of the I wills. <laughs> and I ran out of ink in my highlighter. <laughs> <laughs> because God is an I will God. Yeah. God wants to bless us. Yeah. God says he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So that kind of puts the onus on us. If you want to believe, if you want to go into a land, if you want to call unto him and I will show thee great and mighty things. If you want to be blessed, if you give, I'll give. If, if, just, if you will, I will. Mm -hmm. And the reason sometimes we deprive ourselves is because God says, if you'll do this, I've got so much. How big do you want God to bless you? Yeah. I look at my stuff. And I like stuff. But I look back at where God has brought me from. And in chapter 13, way back there in the beginning of his ministry, God said he was very rich with gold and silver and cattle. I'm not very rich, but I am blessed. Amen. God has taken care of my every single need and a lot of my wants. And so I can stand here before you this morning and say, after these things, church, and you make the mistake of asking me, what, 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 what things, Pastor? Oh, I can start <laughs> back when I was like four. 
because that's the earliest memories I have was four or five, somewhere along in there. Some of y'all remember changing your own diaper. I, I don't remember that. I'm sorry. I got about four or five years old is the earliest memories I have. And one of the earliest memories I have, I was playing with a, a very poisonous snake out in the corner of the garden. And I told mom, it was a snake. Ah, oh, it's a frog. <laughs> okay. It's the longest frog I ever seen. <laughs> and most frogs I ever seen hopped, and this one kind of slithered along the ground. But you know all, Mom. <laughs> Look at all the kids pointing at their moms. <laughs> anyway, um, but but God truly does know all. And I can, I can look at my life and say, after this thing, and this thing, and this thing, and this time, and when God saved me here, and God saved me here, and God delivered me here, and God gave me back this here, and God, and God, and God, and God, and God, and I can stand before you this morning, I can say, after these things. Amen. And I can tell you this morning, trust him, it'll be worth it. Yeah. Throw aside what you've been trained. Yeah. Throw aside what you've been taught. Abram had to do that. He had been trained in idol worship. He'd been trained in paganism. He'd been trained. And God said, no, I need to take you to a better place. <laughs> and the choice is yours this morning. Do you want a better place? Amen. Do you want more than what you have? Do you want to be more blessed than what you are? Do you want to be closer to God than what you are? Do you want what God's best for you this morning? Yeah. Are you satisfied with what you got? Mm -hmm. I personally want God's best. Me and, me and Matthew, we got, a, we got our own thing. Not Matthew, Malachi. He says, you give and I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you can't receive. And uh, my windows have been open and they ain't full yet. So God, you just keep right on giving. But Abram is living proof that God can go from Abram to Abraham to the lineage of Christ to the father of many nations to I will bless those that bless you curse those that curse you. Because he says over in Malachi again, he says, and I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. When, when, when Satan comes after me and, and, and I've done what I'm supposed to do, God says, oh, 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 oh. hold on there, dude. I kicked you out of him and now I'm going to kick you out of his life. Because yep. he says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Yes. And, 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 and God says, you just do what you're supposed to do and I'll take care of the devil for you. I don't have to fight the devil. <laughs> Rosa's starting to car. She's going to go. <laughs> See y'all internet preachers? When you got folks in the congregation that have the remote controls starting their cars, you know it's time to quit. <laughs> you know what they're going Whether God's done talking or not, they finish listening. So we're, we're done. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word, where you brought us from, and where you're going to plan to take us to. God, we ask you to bless us as we go our separate ways today. God, if there's anybody here that's not where you want them to be, God, I pray that today would be their life-changing event. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.